Today we're going to use the ShopBot desktop to cut the side panels for a full-sized Apple box. I selected a scrap that's a couple inches longer than my desired final part. I'll write the dimensions on here and mount it to the bed. Notice that I've mounted it at this arbitrary location in the X and Y. Over on the computer, the drawing file is set up at 18 by 24 to correspond with the size of the machine's bed. So I'll draw up my workpiece, then I'll drag some guidelines out and locate that piece on the drawing in the exact same position that it's located on the physical machine relative to X and Y. And just as an exercise, I'll draw some little circles that more or less correspond with the position of the screws holding the workpiece down. Now I'll take the outline of the actual part I'm trying to make, which is the side panel. I'll use the software to quickly center the side panel inside of my workpiece. And then I'll offset it by a quarter of an inch, which is the thickness of the bit, just to show you this area where the bit would cut. Now that I've done this, it's easy to see that there's plenty of room for the bit to cut the part out without running into the screws. Now let's get back to making the part. Looking at this completed Apple box, we can see that the side panels only need rounded edges on the two short sides, as the long sides will be butted up to the top and bottom pieces. And we've still got the point round over bit in the machine from the last operation, so we'll start by doing the rounded edges. With the CNC mill, we're not beholden to doing things in the particular order dictated by conventional shop tools, where we would first have to cut this piece and then round the edge. With the ShopBot, we can do things in whatever order is convenient for us. This point will become significant later on in the series when we start discussing production workflows. The last time when we cut the top out, we selected the entire outline of the part and used that to make our round over cutting file. But this time we only need these two short edges on the side. I've got those drawn up on a separate layer in the drawing, so here I've turned off the main layer for visibility's sake. With those two edges selected, we then click on Profile Toolpath and proceed as we did last time. Now let's talk about toolpaths for a minute, because this is something that might seem intimidating to a first-time user, but it's actually very simple. When we select a line or vector on our drawing to make a toolpath out of, the machine knows that we wanted to cut something along this line. But in broad strokes, the machine still needs three pieces of information from us. Number one is how deep do we want to cut? So we enter that amount in the cutting depth area. Number two, what kind of bit are we using? So we indicate that to the machine under the tool area by selecting the appropriate bit in the tool database. Each bit in that database has a number of associated settings with it, like how fast it should travel, how fast it should plunge, etc. And these settings are automatically sent to the machine. We'll show you how to create and edit those settings in a future video. And number three, which side of the line are we cutting on? Which is to say, are we cutting inside the line, outside the line, or directly on the line? So we tell it what we want under the machine vectors category. In a future video, we'll dive deeper into these three categories to show you the little tweaks and modifications you'll make as your needs and skills progress. But for now, we'll get back to cutting. After the round overs are cut, we'll switch back to a straight bit and then cut the outline out just the same way we did with the top piece in the last video. Then we just demount the piece, get rid of the tabs, and we're good to go. This is about the simplest thing we'll cut in this project, and I'll make the second side piece off camera. Coming up next, we've got to cut the face pieces, which are a bit trickier, and to make them, we're going to show you what's called two-sided machining. 